In the quiet hours of a moonlit night, when the world seemed to hold its breath, I found myself drawn to the eerie allure of an old cemetery nestled on the outskirts of town. The gravestones stood like silent sentinels, their names and epitaphs worn away by time. It was a place of final rest, but on that night, it became a stage for unsettling encounters that would forever haunt my memory. As I wandered among the tombstones, my footsteps echoed eerily in the stillness. The air was heavy with the scent of decaying leaves and damp earth. My flashlight cast long shadows, and the hushed whispers of the wind sent shivers down my spine. My heart quickened as I approached a weathered mausoleum. Its door was slightly ajar, and a pale, ghostly light emanated from within. An irresistible curiosity overcame my fear, compelling me to investigate. Inside I found an old, ornate coffin, seemingly untouched by the ravages of time. It bore the name of a long-forgotten soul. As I gazed upon the coffin, a chilling breeze swept through the mausoleum, extinguishing my flashlight. In the darkness, I felt a presence, a presence that seemed to whisper my name. Panic surged within me, and I fumbled for my flashlight, desperate to escape the mausoleum's clutches. When the beam of light pierced the darkness once more, the mausoleum was empty, save for the ancient coffin. I fled into the night, my heart pounding. The memory of that ghostly encounter burned into my mind. But that was not the end of my unsettling cemetery experiences. On another occasion, I ventured into a different graveyard, drawn by the allure of its mysterious history. As I wandered among the tombstones, I heard faint, mournful cries that seemed to echo from the depths of the earth. The ground beneath my feet quivered, and the very earth itself seemed to moan. As I drew closer to the source of the cries, I stumbled upon a forgotten grave, its surface marred by claw marks and a chilling epitaph. Heed the warning, for the dead do not rest. The air grew thick with an otherworldly presence, and I knew that I had intruded upon a place where the living and the dead coexisted in a delicate balance. Haunted by these encounters, I left the cemetery, vowing never to return to those unhallowed grounds. In the stillness of the night, I couldn't help but wonder about the stories buried beneath the gravestones and the restless spirits that lingered in the shadows. The cemeteries held secrets and mysteries that defied explanation, and I had glimpsed a world where the boundaries between the living and the dead blurred into something profoundly unsettling. In the shadowy realm of a forgotten cemetery, where time had cast its shroud over moss-covered tombstones, I found myself entangled in a series of unsettling encounters with the living, encounters that blurred the lines between the earthly and the ethereal. As I wandered among the graves, my footsteps seemed to echo through the silence, a reminder of my solitude. The air was heavy with the scent of damp earth, and the setting sun cast long, ominous shadows. It was then that I first noticed a figure, a solitary woman dressed in tattered clothing, her face obscured by unkempt hair. She approached me with an air of quiet desperation, her eyes bearing the weight of countless sorrows. Her voice was a whisper, barely audible, as she spoke of a long-lost love and an unfulfilled promise. My heart ached for her, and I offered what little comfort I could. As I continued my exploration of the cemetery, I encountered more figures, strangers who appeared lost and disoriented, as though they were searching for something beyond the grave. They spoke of unfinished business, of lives cut short, and of the haunting regret that bound them to this earthly realm. The encounters grew increasingly unsettling. A man in a tattered suit recounted a tale of betrayal and revenge, his eyes ablaze with anger. Another figure, a child, reached out with spectral hands, pleading for guidance to find his way to the afterlife. I was trapped in a world where the living and the dead converged in a macabre dance of despair. The cemetery had become a nexus of restless souls, each with their own tragic tale to tell. The boundary between the earthly and the supernatural had dissolved, and I found myself caught in a chilling narrative of regrets, unfulfilled desires, and the relentless pull of the past. As I left the cemetery, the voices of the departed still echoed in my mind, a haunting reminder that the line between the living and the dead is often more porous than we dare to imagine. In that eerie place, I had glimpsed the profound and unsettling connection between the living and those who had long since passed, leaving me with a sense of disquiet that would linger long after I had left the haunted grounds.
Amidst the haunting silence of a moonless night, I found myself standing alone in a desolate graveyard, my heart pounding with fear. The tombstones loomed in the shadows in every direction. It was a place that, in the daylight, held an air of solemn peace, but by night, it transformed into something far more sinister. My presence in that forsaken place was the result of a dare, a foolish challenge posed by friends on a whim. As I wandered deeper into the graveyard, my flashlight's feeble beam was my only source of comfort, illuminating the aged gravestones that bore witness to the passage of time and the countless souls that rested beneath. The rustling of unseen creatures only added to my unease. I could hear the distant hoot of an owl, a mournful sound that seemed to echo the thoughts of those who had long since departed. As I reached the center of the graveyard, my flashlight flickered, casting a glow amongst the tombstones. Panic surged through me as the light extinguished completely, leaving me in total darkness. My heart raced, and a cold sweat trickled down my spine. I fumbled desperately for my phone, praying for its screen to light up. When it finally did, I saw that the time was 3.33 a.m., a number associated with superstitions and dark omens. It was then that I heard it, a soft, distant whisper, like a voice carried on the wind. I strained my ears, trying to make sense of the words. It was as if the very earth itself was speaking, recounting tales of sorrow, regret, and despair. The whispers grew louder, surrounding me, and I felt an invisible presence drawing nearer. In a paroxysm of terror, I stumbled backward, my feet tripping over a moss-covered gravestone. As I fell to the ground, I glimpsed at something in the darkness, an ethereal figure, shrouded in tattered robes, its face hidden in the shadows. The figure extended a spectral hand toward me, and I could feel a bone-chilling coldness radiating from it. Paralyzed with fear, I tried to scream, but no sound escaped my lips. Just as the figure drew near, my friend's laughter echoed in the distance, their flashlights sweeping over the graveyard. The apparition vanished, and I was left trembling on the ground. They had come to find me, having realized the extent of their foolish dare. They helped me to my feet, and we quickly fled the graveyard, our hearts heavy with the weight of the unknown. That night, I learned that some places are best left undisturbed, that the past has a way of reaching out to those who dare to trespass into the realm of the restless dead. The graveyard at night had become a haunting nightmare, a place where the living and the departed converged in a dance of terror, and I was fortunate to have escaped with my sanity intact.